Good morning. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Eduardo Vega, Professor of the Faculty of Economics, General Secretary of the same faculty, and it is my honor to moderate the first panel after having heard not only the inauguration words, but also the keynote conference that uh, took place before this uh, panel, where uh, in this one, Francisco Guillén Martín will present his work called Input Output M Matrix and the National Account System in Mexico, produced by INEGI. To this work, to this piece of work, after this piece of work, we'll hear the comments made by Professor Martin Pouchet Anjul from the Faculty of Economics. And just like Pablo uh, shortened the um, curriculum uh, and biodata of our guests, I will do the same. Francisco, I apologize, I won't be able to read the whole bio so that you can have more time for your presentation and discussion. But obviously, Francisco Guillén Martín, an INEGI official, studied his BA in economics at the Autonomous Technological Institute of Mexico. He also carried out postgraduate studies in national accountancy and input-output matrices in U.S. universities. His professional career has developed essentially in the public sector throughout the last 30 years, specifically in INEGI. And he has promoted, coordinated, and uh, uh, different uh, accountancy and statistical projects at that institution. I will mention a few of them. He has promoted and coordinated from the very beginning the important project called uh, Economic and Ecological Account System in Mexico, which together with international uh, methodological consultation of the UN, INEGI in Mexico was a pioneer organization to promote these national statistics that bring the e that link the economy and the environment. From August 98 to June 2002, Francisco was director of national accountancy, socioeconomic studies, and prices at INEGI, and currently. Since April 2012, he's the general deputy director of the national accounts of the same institute, same national institution on statistics and geography in Mexico. Under his responsibility, he is in charge of all the national account system as a whole. Before giving him the word to Francisco, I want to make some references of our commentator, Professor Martin Pouchet Agnoul of the Faculty of Economics of the UNAM. Our dear Professor Pouchet was born in Durazno, Uruguay. He studied at the University of the Republic in Montevideo, Uruguay, and he also studied here in Mexico. He carried out different postgraduate and specialization and PhD uh, studies here at the National University, Autonomous University of Mexico. He was faculty member and researcher at the CIDE, the Center of Economic uh, Teaching and Research from 1981 to 1990. And at the Faculty of Economics, he became a faculty member as of 1990. He was faculty, extraordinary faculty member at the Faculty of Economics, Economics, coordinating different research, teaching, and quantitative mathematical methods and analytical methods, specializing in input-output for the Faculty of Economics and other entities, both in Mexico and Latin America. At present, he carries out research in national accountancy in input-output analysis and economic dynamics, and he has also participated in important uh, um, programs on uh, mathematics for economics, not only at the UNAM, but also in CIDE, Flaxo, and other institutions and universities in Mexico and Latin America. 
I will not refer to other of his activities so that we have more time and more direct information from our uh, presenter and commentator. So I will ask Francisco, I will give him the floor so he can start his presentation. We have half an hour for the presentation and another 20, 25 minutes for comments perhaps even less. If you allow me, Martin, only 20 minutes for comments, so we can receive uh, some three questions from the audience. If we had a little bit more time, of course, we could answer more concerns of the audience. Francisco, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this invitation to this workshop. And undoubtedly, I think that input-output is one of the tools, as we saw in the keynote conference, of great use to analyze different topics. It can be associated to households. It could be associated in terms of employment and another series of elements. And one of the big questions that on many occasions have emerged is how do you do this? What does this mean? What are we understanding by consumption? What do we understand uh, uh, as measuring consumption? Where can we walk along the path of production? What is used for production? But if I think in terms of these kind of basic elements, the question can go beyond this. What nourish, nourishes this analysis? And this is basically one of the purposes that I have when I present the input-output from the perspective of the statistical sustenance it might have. And this is a specific purpose of my conversation, of my chat, of my conference. On the other hand, I also think that it is important to take up some points. Dr. De Alva noted some of the elements associated to the lengthy history that we have in the development of input-output matrices, either every 10 years or through different methods of articulation, such as the RAS method, to update these matrices. And specifically here, some points that have to be underlined are associated to the characteristics of some of the valuations of input-output, because this can refer to the meaning of the elements that we can be dealing with in analytical terms. In fact, I believe that the first matrices, including the ones of the Bank of Mexico, the ones carried out by the Institute itself, we're using price producers, i.e. the prices of the goods and services at a factory level. This has a very specific connotation because what results is that when we see an input-output from the perspective of the production function, that product specifically is being valued at the factory. When it is being sold is when you start to integrate a whole series of other values that might be associated to different elements, such as trade, the role that trade plays. And we have to obviously add these trade margins as well, or transport, how the goods are transported so that it can reach or you can see this reflected in the rows, the uh, price over the counter. To speak about this in simple terms is actually uh, an addition of things. Nonetheless, from the statistical perspective, it, it making these measurements is highly complex to try to define per commodity, what are the uh, trade margins in each product, and also the relationships in terms of the value margins because of the distribution of the commodities or products themselves. This obviously, in the input-output matrix, as of the baseline in the national account system in 1993, changed. And we are now talking about a different kind of value. We're talking of to what extent the national, the country's national accounts, the point of departure of which are the matrices and the 
input-output matrices in the tables are now valued at basic prices, as so-called basic prices, i.e., the price at which the factory price thus eliminating the taxes so that we have clearer elements of the specificity of the value of the output without taking into account uh, the taxation. What this leads us to is that we have to talk not only about values in terms of the trade margins, but also uh, value the kind of taxes and the characteristics of these taxes. This is not an easy task because in output taxes, in product taxes, that are those like the VAT that is transferred to the purchasing price, or also production taxes that are part of a very specific cost to generate a specific output or product. And this there's a specific shift here. To talk about the input-output matrix without talking about the international guidelines is another element that we have to take into account because this eventually results in changes, even structural changes that might be reflected in the input-output matrices. Considering this, I think it is of relevance, it is germane to talk about the importance of what the point of reference implies for the national accountancy and the change in the baseline date. And an essential scheme in the input-output matrix and national accountancy is that this is a specific framework under which all the available information is organized. Censuses, surveys, administrative records, because based on this, a whole set of elements or variables are generated that go beyond what many times we can imagine. In this sense, we're talking about the fact that you can analyze more than 400 economic variables, and on the other hand, they are part of the benchmarking and indicators that are under a one-year frequency. Within this perspective, the input-output analysis is associated more to a schematic that has to do with the development of two different approaches. On the one hand, you have economic activity, i.e., what activities do we have in the country, what is being produced, what are we using for this production. But on the other hand, who are we producing for, i.e., for the households or in a certain moment whether production comes from the government. It's a production that affects the government's expenditure and consumption, i.e., the destination points or exports. And this can be seen from an approach that focuses on ac economic activities as uh, benchmark for 2008, we have to think in terms, when we're constructing an input-output matrix, we have to think of an exhaustive revision of all the information in the country, all the economic information in the country. And here, for example, a while ago, reference was made specifically to the association of household consumption with measurements in terms of the uh, age patterns that can be identified. But when we're seeing this topic, what is embedded within the input-output is the analysis of the microdata associated to instruments, for example, in this case, the national surveys, the national income expenditure of household income expenditure surveys, in order to have total or variables or total measurements of consumption. This is the importance of dealing with an input-output that is articulated to the national account system, i.e., to incorporate the large amount of information that we have in order to specifically reflect the structural changes and the consumption patterns, how the different elements are being defined. 
On the other hand, we I want to improve the information coverage in time terms. From the perspective of the economic circuit, i.e. from the perspective of the institutional sectors, specifically, we can say that input-output absorbs on the one hand like an institutional approach absorbs the households. This was mentioned in the earlier uh, lecture. You have the government, you include the companies, the enterprises, and I will not uh, go into this, otherwise I'll eat up my time. The process, the general process or methodology to develop these kind of elements or to reach an input-output matrix, the first thing that we do is have the supply tables and the goods and services use tables. Due to the features of the information, on the one hand, the supply tables in Mexico, we can observe different activities. But after that, we have to break down all this information in order to observe the different goods and the destination points and to be able to elaborate the destination of all these goods, whether it's household consumption, investment, or exportation for each one of the commodities that are being uh, analyzed. In general, if I took the data of the economic census, we're talking of more than 30,000 goods or outputs or products that are being analyzed, and this is a great wealth of information. When we carry out a whole series of studies to analyze specific topics, on the other hand, I mentioned that the input-output matrix is a benchmark to develop time series in the national account system. The matrices are complemented, as we all know, with direct co coefficients or indirect coefficients. One of the elements that I want to underline is that at present, in terms of the application of the international guidelines, the national account system and the input-output matrix, we are undergoing a transformational process to incorporate the good guidelines uh, approved by the World Bank, the UN, the Monetary Fund, the International Monetary Fund, and so on and so forth. In the case of Mexico, we now have three countries. The first one is Australia, who managed to integrate these new recommendations in its supply and use tables, and they are gradually developing other incorporations in the case of the USA. They haven't published this yet. They were noting a date of publication as the 31st of July this year with these new international guidelines incorporated. Canada has already published its main aggregates the implementation of the national accounts. And if everything goes well, I think that on August 20, 2013, you will have available an input-output matrix for Mexico, which, as opposed to other matrices, the uh, previous one was published at the level of subsectors, where for specific studies, we could open up to 250 different economic branches. In this occasion, we're, we'll be publishing information regarding more than 800 different activities for the analysis. This, with the most recent national account system guidelines. Talking about guidelines, I think that a lot has been said in general terms regarding different topics. One of them is globalization. Another one is the insertion of the, mar the countries in the international market. And there, from here, a whole series of elements emerge that are linked to the uh, international guidelines that have been developed. For example, Eurostat has been developing a manual requested by the OCDE I, how transactions have to be measured that are represented in foreign trade and that in a certain moment can have repercussions on instruments like the input-output analysis or the national accountancy. In this sense, we're generating efforts to get complementary tables that will allow us to observe 
through the supply and use table what Mexico has with the rest of the world in the global manufacturing sector, i.e. the possible chains that the manufacturing industry might have with the rest of the world, measuring the value added in exportation or the GDP of these kind of industries. And we also have the Group 20, the G20, where there are financial recommendations. And of course, at present, we're also establishing as a classifier, the CIAN 2007, which is the most recent version of the International Industrial North American Classification. It's a classifier that comes from an agreement signed between Mexico, the USA, and Canada. And a relevant aspect or a relevant point, on this occasion, we're also associating everything that can be related in terms of the tariffs or the hindrances, i.e. the tariff rates related to the international classification system so that the analysts within the input-output approach can see specific articulations. Apart from other suggestions that emerge out of public consultation processes. In this sense, apart from the international guidelines, the point of departure, which is the input-output matrix, allows us to ensure historical series of the national accounts through harmonizing all the data and all the statistical information, generating also alternative gener um, indicators regarding growth and obviously the backbone of the national accountancy is based on the development of these input-output matrices, uh, matrices that are articulated to the conceptual framework of the national accounts, thus allowing to address different elements of the good and services accounts. We call them satellite accounts, but they're actually thematic accounts, tourism, ecology, volunteer work. Un, un, unpaid work. We also have short-term indicators, regional estimates, and institutional uh, um, indicators. So the input-output matrix associated to the baseline is not only a tool that can allow us to observe the structural uh, changes and the weighting. It reviews the whole statistical infrastructure of the country to have the best data in each one of the macroeconomic variables that are used. And one of the essential elements we know that an input-output matrix is a photography, it's an x-ray. But what happens if our client is moving within this x-ray? The x-ray will be all blurred. And one of the elements is to select within the, na the general scheme a year where there is a certain degree of information availability, which is a restriction. Secondly, that it be a year that in general terms is a year uh, that is has a certain normality. I emphasize a certain normality because anybody who asks me, in the year 2008, we started with a crisis. In the case of Mexico, in fact, the impact or the effect was in the first quarter of 2009 where we felt this crisis. And this has repercussions not only on the phenomena from the outside, if absorbed from the outside, but it has those of us that live here in Mexico, let's remember the health issues that we had, influenza, the flu. So this is the schematic of all the information that we are using, and that implies, if you can note, an intensive exploitation of the administrative rec records, the census, and that are included within the framework of the system and the measurement system of input-output, something that is of relevance. Here, obviously, we have referred in terms of the his historical terms about different input-output matrices, but what we have to underline is that this input-output matrix or the supply and use tables came out for the first time with all the statistical infrastructure, but 
it comes out the first time five years after carrying out the previous exercise. That's one point. The other point is that from this moment on, we will be discussing articulations or reviews and changes in the base year every five years. By 2018, we will be conducting uh, input outro, output matrix and we'll be using the national account system. But if you pay attention to the years, you will see that 1970 did, uh, w was um, made public in 78, eight years later. And then we published the 1981. We, we do a change of the base year in without a matrix in 83. And after 93 and after that, we have a three-year period. But this represents a 10-year period. And the periods in this, well, in this occasion, we want to, to reduce them to have much more precise information. Just to mention a few of the elements, we have uh, 58 topics in terms of international guidelines that modify the offer use um, um, accounts and national accounts. As of today, we've applied 37 topics of, of these 58 recommendations, um, inc including informal uh, activities. We knew they were part of the national accounts, but now we can see them in terms of the informal sector per se. We have we've we've conducted measurements that are totally explicit. Explicit. We can remove the rest of the rest of these, but it's man it's too many. But I just like to highlight that in terms of financial in, uh, tools uh, of the financial system and its relation with the the rest of the modules we have 16 modules and we will continue to um, use them at, as part of a different different subsystem system how the payment payment balance of the Bank of Mexico is um, uh, updated and also financial assets and liabilities generated by the National Commission for Banking and the Central Bank and that at the input output matrix level but also in terms of financial flow we see these recommendations so that we may achieve these suggestions. We also considered the corresponding consultations or those related to, to different public functionaries. We've been close to specialists and to, to their uh, recommendations or interventions from uh, their opinions. So we, we are uh, adopting 13 or 14 percent. Uh, 15, 57 percent of these are comments, questions that we've um, uh, given attention to in, at any specific moment. Some of the impacts on the input-output mo model, well, one of the most important ones is our research and development. Um, with, on the base year 2003, with the international guidelines for international accounts for 1993, uh, research and development formed an implicit part of the costs of industries. Now, what we require as an an implementation element, which is also a repercussion within the measurements of the uh, input-output matrix, is that we cannot c no longer consider them as a current expense for industries. Instead, they form part of investment. And in this sense, the direct effect is that there's a diminishment in intermediate consumption at an increase in the uh, GDP and uh, capital formation. The same is occurring with other intangibles such as databases, programs, etc., that we are incorporating. In this case, we are incorporating what we can see at the, mar in, at the market level, meaning what everyone in industries produces in terms of software for themselves, that, that can't be measured, but we're observing those that at a moment we, at any given moment, we can um, 
determined through micro data analysis and we see a change. It's no longer a cost, it's also part of, an, of their investment because it leads to a greater production. Others have to do with copyright, uh, patents, elements that can be managed and which in the past uh, were part of costs and which we are now um, implementing as part of um, the, the products. Others have to do with um, entertainment. Uh, there's uh, and um, it has there's changes in te technologies related to this. We're jumping from uh, armament, for instance, which was considered consumption, an intermediate consumption is now being um, uh, used as pro as proof formation of capital. It's it, because it has very specific repercussions. Some of the elements um, include holdings and or, or holder companies or units that aid the um, industries that at some moment, at certain moment, were considered a part of an establishment of an of activity. Now they, now this has, this used to have regional repercussions for levels of concentration. Uh, used in Mexico City or in large cities, and this has a distribution of on, on the GDP, but also on the activity of the economy within the um, the input output. So um, beforehand, we can see what can have a positive or negative effect. The paid interest minus received interest, which were perceived as a cost of uh, production, a financial, intermediate financial uh, repercussions were seen uh, from the outside. Now we're um, distribu distributing them to the different areas of the activity that use them, and we registered uh, positive and negative changes within the within the input output model. I think that very concretely what we can see through this that we've um, seen is that the input output model uses a new classifier. We have 814 activities. Um, we have uh, an effort to articulate commerce and with regards to classification, we also have a standardization of statistics. We're also giving a treatment to a specific treatment to property rents uh, or, or income from oil, for instance, and by August 20, we'll not only have the 2008 um, input-output matrix with all these effects, but also other indicators, which are 14 products that we'll be releasing on the same date. And this, what, what, just to finish, what I want to highlight is that this input-output matrix and national accounts are a same, one same thing in Mexico. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francisco. Without further ado, I'd like, I'd ask Martin to kindly make his comments. Well, first of all, I thank you very much everyone from the School of Economics and my colleagues from the INEGI for having saved me the, sorry, sorry for having allowed me to comment this very import, uh, interesting and rich presentation because it r makes reference to 
to the how the basis of information that ec economists in Mexico use to study the, the Mexican economy. Second, I'd like to evoke, and uh, sorry for the, this, because this is a bit personal, but it has to do with um, what I'm going to mention later. In 1980, Ciro Velasco, who was here present, he was a general direc director of statistics, and he invited me to work at this direct uh, at this office, and I worked with the Mexican ma mathematician. Alberto Ruiz Moncayo, who was the advisor for the director. At this time, Alberto Ruiz Moncayo, who, was, uh, who, who studied ecostatistics and probabilistics, and who was very aware of the needs of the information so that um, statistical analysis could be made of this data, would say with the information with this with such limited information in terms of periodicity it's impossible to conduct uh, statistical analysis in Mexico and he decided within uh, this his activities to enrich databases in order to do input output analysis I think this is a lesson the INEGI learned and today the director of national accounts says that in August we'll have 14 products that cover the information needs. The, 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 the problem is now the opposite. We have so much information, as Dr. De Alba said, that we have to teach our students to use this information to conduct the uh, tra trajectory analysis, change analysis, of structural change um, analysis of the, of the Mexican economy. I think uh, Francisco put many crucial topics on the table, more than uh, topics that were crucial more than 30 years ago. The idea that the organizing principle of the statistics of a country uh, is part of the is, is based on the frame, international frameworks that form part of the national accounting systems. And I'd like to highlight four aspects that he's mentioned and which I think are crucial. First of all, um, putting at the center of the economic circuit the institutions that allow creating a logic of agents, accounts, transactions that allow us to analyze the economy, the economy from a model of different um, uh, of different models that use the behavior of agents to microfound the behaviors and then create an aggregate analysis. A second thing that's, that was mentioned by Francisco, which is important, is the concern for the valuation of these activities and the price systems related to each of these economic activities. This has been a fundamental change in the construction process of the entire uh, system for national accounts in Mexico. When we were working on statistics many years ago, the price systems associated to this were very elementary because of the um, inputs and outputs that were part of these processes. A third thing mentioned by Francisco and which need to be, needs to be highlighted is the emphasis placed on measuring the transactions with the rest of the world in terms of aggregate value generated in Mexico when we are exporting 
when it comes to high expert economies such as the Mexican e economy, this is a central element. But at the same time, it's a central element for the functioning of a global economy. And Mexico is is seeking to, to contribute to the analysis of the development of global value chains at the international level. And the fourth aspect, which I think is very important to consider, and uh, of those of which Francisco spoke of, has to do with the concern that the input-output matrix as all uh, information that comes from a dynamic process is a photograph in a moment of time. And it's fundamental that this photograph is uh, a, a clear photograph. And in this sense, the operations that have to do with the ch change of uh, base year are fundamental to achieve a clear picture. And these topics, I think, are uh, a foundation for the development of the national account system and of the input-output matrix and also to the other matrix that may derive social accounting for the rest of the economy. I'd like to mention four points which I think the INEGI has worked on, but on which researchers are very anxious to develop uh, or to see information that the INEGI has already provided. Francisco mentioned the importance of putting uh, the accounting of the financial industry in line with international standards. I think it will be very important for us for the accounting activity of and the transactions of financial instruments that are collected by the Bank of Mexico are consistent and compatible with what the INEGI is doing in terms of the accounting system of the institution of, of government sectors. I think the INEGI has made great steps forward since also the Bank of Mexico, but for us to understand the exchange of financial instruments between resident and non-resident um, actors, especially in the with, with re regards to the United States, is a fundamental aspect to understand the process of growth or long-term stagnation of the Mexican economy. Second. The topics associated to uh, the distribution of the uh, brute exit surplus of the economy is important to understand income distribution. Having a more precise classification of this surplus in terms of uh, what sector of the economy they belong to and who is um, appropriating this the, themselves of this surplus and understand, understanding how the, these types of income are being um, sent to workers or organizations that are not uh, companies, formally speaking, is a central aspect of the Mexican economy. Third, Francisco said that they're working on the um, input-output uh, charts for capital. Those of us who, who discuss this hope this leads to accounting of the capital reserves. And this is l truly lagging with regards to the needs of economic analysis in Mexico. And finally, a reference to a great step forward that Francisco has mentioned, which is the 
consideration of um, ex experimental expenses. I think this is a central aspect for establishing the role played by an important part of the knowledge generation within the economy and which is part of the analysis of our trajectory of, of, of growth within the framework of an economy, economy that is more and more dominated by activities in which the input is not no longer information but knowledge. And this type of accounting separated from a, a subsystem of account a brute capital formation account will be uh, central to our future activities in this sector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Because of the time constraints, and thanks to the fact that they stuck to time, we are actually retrieving time so we can stick to the program. With this purpose in mind, to keep sticking to time, without much ado, I ask you whether you have any other questions. If you would kindly uh, uh, write them out and pass them to the front. Or otherwise, if you prefer to speak the question out, but I would ask you to give your name and what institution you come from and to be very concrete, very specific with your questions. So we hope uh, to hear your interventions. Apparently, there are no questions or comments. There's a question in the back. My name is Alejandro Burgues of the College of the Northern Border, Colegio de la Frontera Norte. My question would be whether you could make any comments about access to microdata that INEGE has recently placed as part of the options for statistical consultations of INEGE. Are there any other questions? Perhaps we could collect three questions and then give the floor to Francisco and to Martin. Good afternoon. I'm Jorge Alvarado from the Department of Economics, and I would like to ask whether you could delve more deeply into the integration into global value chains. What is being done? What kind of details are you seeing in each one of these analyses? Thank you. Any other questions? Over here. Good morning. My name is Luis Ortega. I'm a PhD student of the Faculty of Economics. In relation to what was mentioned, I have just read a paper by the Central European Bank that is looking trying to identify the global value chains. And for this purpose in mind, they collected the supply and use tables for Europe, plus the institutional sectors before reaching the input-output matrix within a logics of from whom to whom in order to be able to identify these global value chains. These, has the NEHI done this same exercise, i.e. to bring together the supply and use tables together with institutional sectors? Thank you. Francisco, if you would like to start answering, and then I will ask Martin whether he has any comments to make about the same questions. Thank you very much for your questions. I'm going to start with the last question, which is the one that is fresher in my mind. In a certain moment, I said that the supply and use table was a point of origin to define 
even the whole national account system, the supply and use tables are broken down by activity. Their articulation is given when we see the other side. We don't see activities, but we see institutional sectors, all the production, all that whole set of goods and services that have a point of origin in an institutional unit that might be a company, the government, and so on and so forth. We have done some work as part of a research process in order to articulate or link together these elements, but it is a very lengthy process in order to link the results we have even tried to deal with, and this hasn't been disseminated yet, it's just an internal work, to link or articulate, to mainly articulate all the balances in the institutional sector accounts in order to see what is the effect that we could have on other transactions associated to the institutional sectors in relation to uh, behavior regarding a tax change, for example. We have used this simply to approach our users and explain to them what the input-output analysis can be used and how the institutional sector accounts can be exploited. But this would imply that we'd have to go beyond the an academic analysis and the model analysis in order to define the elements that each one of the users would like to um, investigate and do research into, and I've just given an example of this. On the other hand, I'm going to try to answer to three ideas in terms of the chain, uh, the value chains. What are we offering? First of all, I mentioned that in the international arena, a new manual of global production is being generated. What do we? In a certain moment, there are a series of elements that are still under discussion at a global level. For example. And here we have a very specific item. If I start to think in terms of a maquila uh, industry in Mexico, and I compare it perhaps with an organizer of a production process that doesn't have inputs but does have suppliers, and that comes in contact and with these suppliers, organizes a process to take advantage of raw materials to generate an intermediate uh, commodity, but apart from this, it, it, it generates uh, textiles, and apart from this, a province generates textiles, and a part of this has an industry that might be producing uh, clothing and to place it specifically in the market. But this organization is carried out internationally in different countries, all of the production is in Mexico. An essential concept emerges here. Must we consider the income movements of that production as part of a country because it was a Mexican who organized together with other countries a production process in different countries and before reaching the final product? Well, supposedly each of the countries that intervened generated a certain ad ag aggregated value, but within the discussion there's the question of whether the intellectual property, the, if they have the intellectual property, they w should be able to articulate their production here in Mexico because who was a resident in Mexico that gave real origin to that production process and to disaggregate this into each one of the s different stages. If I compare this with a maquila or with a commodity to be processed, another problem emerges because the property of the inputs, the input property has so far been defined as an element to be taken into account. To consider that the measurements within the national accounts be 
take place in net terms, i.e. to only use the aggregated value generated by that specific activity. The problem here is how to know whether there was a change in property, in input property or not. What we are doing in order to offer in terms of the chain of value uh, analysis are complementary tables that can allow us to know not only the maquila information but information about other manufacturing industries that under a tree decision process i.e. under a whole set of criteria these are producers of commodities because it's all mixed because they're maquila you can't separate them so they're maquila and because of the foreign participation and here we have to see the holdings the foreign controllers and so on and so forth so they have a global impact because of the kind of decisions and the volume of their imports and exports. These are the elements that have to be taken into account. And therefore, we use complementary tables where we'll be able to identify the added the aggregated value of exportation of the manufactured goods and we would need to distribute them by observing or generating a whole series of analyses. The OCDE has been generating some of these and also the uh, uh, World Trade Organization have also generated these kind of uh, analysis of value chains by industry and globally or at a worldwide level. This would be an input to be exploited so that we can reach a more precise estimates within the analysis of the chains of value. I think I already talked a little bit about this. Now, lastly, the microdata, the institute, now very briefly, has a whole schematic so that researchers can register, can subscribe, and make requests for microdata. A kind of agreement, specific agreement, has to be signed, Alejandro, in order to ensure confidentiality, information confidentiality. So we need to know what is the purpose of this piece of research. And at the same time, they can have access to the specific microdata they might be interested in. I want to reiterate, we're going to continue paying a lot of attention to information confidentiality. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Francisco. I will ask Martin to close with some final words and comments or reactions to the questions and answers. I simply want to say that what we're going to present as follows is regarding what is being done in relation to the global change of value anyway. Thank you very much. So I will just close with the good news that Francisco left us, that in less than a month's time, we will have the publication of the input-output matrix for 2013, and with a detailed explanation that he meant regarding the explicit and close relationship with the uh, national account system at a macro level. So thank you very much to the panel. And I invite the members of the next panel to come and occupy your places here in the front. Thank you very much.